When you initialize an instrument, an empty MIDI object is initialized with it. You can either start editing the object by de defining a buffer size and inserting events, or by inserting a whole MIDI file. In today's video tutorial, I'll show you how to insert a MIDI file into the MIDI object. And never miss a tutorial by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash adsrtoots. You can only use one MIDI object at a time within an instrument. The MIDI object is held in memory and can be accessed by any of the script slots. It is possible to add, remove, and edit MIDI events within the object as well as import and export MIDI files. The multi-script can also hold one MIDI object and handles it in the same way as an instrument. If you want to create a MIDI sequence from scratch, you first need to assign a buffer size, which effectively creates a number of inactive events. From this point, you can activate and edit MIDI events using the MIDI event commands. You can also load a MIDI file to use or edit the data in a script. Depending on the command and variables you use, this will either be combined with an existing MIDI data or it will replace the existing data. It should be noted that loading a MIDI file is an asynchronous command and you should always use asynchronous loading commands. To insert a MIDI file, We'll use the MF insert file command. So let's take a look. So the parameters for MF insert um, file is path, track offset, position offset, and mode. So path is a fully qualified path of the MIDI file, including the file name. Track offset, this applies a track offset to the MIDI data. Position applies a position offset um, to the MIDI data, and this is in ticks, this is in MIDI ticks. And the mode defines the mode of insertion. So there's three modes, mode zero will replace all existing events. Mode one will only replace overlapping events and mode two will merge all events. And there's some things to keep in mind when using MF insert file. The first is when you load MIDI files with this command, it's asynchronous. So you should make sure you use the async complete callback to check the status. So if you use MF insert file um, in the on and in callback, the async complete won't be called. So you should try to use it somewhere else preferably in the UI control callback. And also, this command, it pairs note on and note off events to a single note on with a note length parameter. Note off events are discarded. So you basically only get a note on and note length. So if you need note off, um, you might have to look uh, for a different function. All right, so let's So let's uh, get started. So of course we have our on and it. We don't need perfu for this one, so I'm just gonna skip that, but I will set my script title. I'm gonna clear any messages. going to declare a variable to hold my file name. I'm going to declare another variable to hold the path. I'm going to set the file name. And we're going to copy the name from my desktop. set the path I'm going to concatenate the file name um, as well I'm going to declare a variable to hold the ID 
of the loaded file and then I'm going to declare a button to actually load the MIDI file and that is it for the on and it and this is just message not messages all right so the next thing that I do is deal with the the button and also I'll actually load the file so I'm going to set the ID equal to MF insert file. So this will return the ID of a loaded file. So I'm going to pass in the parameter for the file path. I don't have any tracks, no position, and I'm going to replace all. So I'm going to set the mode to zero. All right, and what did I do wrong? Oh, typo. All right, and now I'm going to call the async complete callback. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check if ni async ID is equal to load MFID. So if it is, I'm going to set load MFID equal to negative one. Now I'm also going to check to see if and I async exit status equals zero. So if it equals zero, that means there was an error. So I'm going to write a message. and anything else other than zero is a success. So I'm, I'm going to write a message. And here I can also pass in the name of the file so that it's displayed in the message box. So and if, and if. So I have a typo. There we go. Oops, and I forgot my concatenation. There we go. So I'm going to load the MIDI file, successfully load the MIDI file. I'm going to change the name so that I can't find it. And as you can see, MIDI file not found. I'm going to change it back. Load the file. Success. So now, right now, this MIDI file is loaded into memory and is ready for me to peruse it, play through it, edit it, do different things to it. So keep in mind that in Contact 5.2, the MIDI file handling has been upgraded and commands and, and working methods from earlier methods are still available for backwards compatibility but for purposes of this tutorial we use the newer methods and don't forget to check out our website at www.contacttutorials.com for more contact tutorials and sounds adsr contact tutorials supercharger contact skills this is dj nice signing off until next time i go make some music